Well, greetings from Destiny Church. The uh, series, uh, Understanding Soul Ties, we as an eldership, actually a number of months ago, felt the Lord say that it was the right season to do this teaching. And when the, uh, uh, this pandemic that we're in right now surfaced, I started to question, is it the right time? But I've been hearing so many testimonies of how people are being set free and liberated uh, from many soul ties, some of them lasting many, many years. And we're hearing about testimonies of liberty and freedom. However, um, as we were going through this series, it be, I suddenly became uh, aware or uh, concerned that there was another aspect of soul ties that we really needed to address. We weren't going to address it because it is controversial, and much of the church doesn't even want to look at this issue, the worldwide church. But as, the, as, as, as an apostolic center, we feel we need to get this information out there. So that's what Pastor Sandy's going to do in just a minute or two, is talk about an even deeper level of demonic activity concerning soul ties, in particular the uh, uh, manifestations of incubus and succubus. When I was uh, ministering back in Ontario, I, I had two uh, um, situations over a period of uh, 15 years that I was asked to address. But since I've been here in the province of Quebec, not only I have, have seen more cases, but an increasing number of cases. And so if you're watching this video and you just say, you know what, this is just too much for me, then just turn off the video. No problem. Just to, just grow close to the Lord. Enjoy your, your, your relationship with the Lord. But if you can identify at all if you can identify at all with any of the examples that Pastor Sandy's about to give you, and, and he can even say, some of you are going to say, that happened to me. I experienced that. If that's you, then please, for your own sake and for the sake of your family and future generations, keep watching this video. Keep listening to every word that Pastor Sandy says, the example she gives, she gives and especially the um, prayer uh, as she leads you in prayer at the end of this video, pray those prayers, declare those prayers, and receive freedom. It, it, some of you are going to say, I thought this was normal. Some of you are going to say, I thought there was something wrong with me. Actually, many of you are going to say, I always thought there was just something wrong with me and I was afraid to share with anybody. Now you're hearing that this happens to a, a, a quite a few people and you're not strange. You're not, there's not something deficient in your life. It's not that you're not spiritual enough. It's that you have been assigned uh, evil spirits and they're attacking you and you need to be set free. So if that's you, please watch, please make the declarations and become free in Jesus name. God bless you as you watch this video and, and teaching. Amen. Good day. Today we're going to, I'm going to continue with a supplement to uh, the three-part series, Understanding Soul Ties. But not, right now I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to pray for myself. So I thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you that you have given us your wisdom, your understanding into not just only soul ties, but the demonic influence that can come through them and through other areas in our life. I thank you, Father, that you have given us the authority, your authority as your ch children of God, to cast out to renounce, to repent, to do all what it is necessary to release us from these burdens and to give us freedom in you. And Father, I, I ask right now that you would open up our spiritual being more and more so that we can hear your words, we can understand them, we can detect where we need to have freedom from it, and that, um, and that Father God, I, I ask right now, I command the enemy to be silenced in people's lives so that they can hear your truths in this matter. And Father, I ask that um, you help me to speak forth clearly and to give instructions as you wanted me to do. And, uh, and to help me also to understand more and more your power of your Holy Spirit and the power of the cross. And I bless everybody. In Christ's name, amen. 
So I'll be giving a, um, a short explanation of the type of demonic influences, namely demons of perversion that can invade one's person. As discussed in parts one through three, there are several points of entry one can receive an ungodly soul tie. But also these types of demonic ent entities also gain entrance through also habitual sin, lawlessness, and through generational curses. Deception, shame, guilt, fear is the tactic that these demons use to control people. Our ignorance of their action of these demons and also, on the other hand, the acceptance of, of one accepting their familiarity within uh, going along with what's been going on with them. Um, and also, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is what keeps these demons active in one's life. So through the supplement, um, we're going to be informed about their deceptions, hopefully acknowledge their existence, discover any legal points of entry within our lives or through generational ties. We're going to renounce them, we're going to repent, and we're going to ask for forgiveness and receive the freedom in the power of the work of the cross of Jesus. So let's get started. As one studies the scriptures, we read of godly spiritual beings manifesting in the natural, by ways of speaking, walking, eating, declaring God's plan. Plans are found numerous times without scripture. Even the people of Sodom thought that these two angels were human and they wanted to have sex with them. And we see that in Genesis 18 through 19. Also, the conception of God's Son, Jesus, through the power of God's Holy Spirit, was mysterious and awesome. And uh, that's through uh, Luke 1, 34 to 35. After the resurrection of Jesus, you know, over 500 people saw and could touch him in his glorious form. See, Jesus was speaking, walking, touching, and also eating while he was here. That's through Luke 24, 1 Corinthians 15. So, it's not hard to consider that fallen angels can also take on human form. These demons of the night that I'm going to be discussing are commonly known in our time as incubus and succubus. And they're from the demonic realm. They inject the seeds of torment and evil in order to destroy God's creative plan for each and every person. You know, they've been referenced through the Bible all the way starting in Genesis. So let's read. More and more people were born. Finally, they spread all over the earth. Some of their daughters were so beautiful that supernatural beings came down and married the ones they wanted. Then the Lord said, I won't let my life-giving breath remain in anyone forever. No one will live more than 120 years. Let's take some, a look at the excerpts from the King James Version of verse 2. Verse 2 says, they took them wives. So let's look at the word took through the Strong's Concordance. The Hebrew word is laka. It means to take, get, fetch, lay hold of, seize, receive, acquire, buy, bring, marry, take a wife, snatch, take away. 
So to take as a wife, let's remember a marriage covenant. As in a marriage covenant, they take a wife. Let's take a look at verse 3 through the James Version. It says, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. So when we look at the word strive through the Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew word is deen. It means to judge, contend, plead, to govern. So let's think about this. The life-giving word of God would no longer be the plumb line or the to govern the, that the people would use to guide them in their center of being who's center in their life. So God's word, God's spirit would no longer govern them on how they were going to live their life. You see, and if we continued with the verse... It says, the children of the supernatural beings who had married these women became famous heroes and warriors. They were called Nephilim and lived on the earth at that time and even later. The Lord saw how bad the people on earth were and that everything they thought and planned was evil. That's from Genesis 6, 1 to 5. So 120 years after that time, God destroyed the earth by a flood. You see, because the children from this ungodly union were called Nephilim, and they were a abomination of conception. They were born as between uh, evil spirits and human they, their bodies were different. They were giants. They were evil and wicked in their thoughts and actions. And they continued to populate and distort the offspring of mankind, so much so that God had to destroy the earth with a flood. But thankful, God kept Noah and his family, who were not in a defiled state. He kept them safe within the ark so that God's plan of redemption through his son Jesus Christ would be established and his life-giving breath would go forth within the world. You know, God has a divine plan. His divine plan and love for his image bearers always prevails. So the total manifestation of the redemption of creation is not yet come. But when, but it will last for eternity when it's in completion. But until then, these demons of the Nephilim still exist today. And they take on the form of a male and female spirit in order to invade one conscious mind, the soul, and release the same sensations, manifestations, stimulations, and physical feelings that one would have during intercourse, and can actually take on the likeness of someone known to the unspecting person. They can come in a dream, either with sexual context, or as a nightmare. And as they gain more and more entry, they proceed by spiritually having physical sexual intercourse with a person. And you know, all throughout the centuries, all over the world, there are other titles have been given, attributed to them, such as um, spirit husband, spirit wife but they are all of the same evil. You see, these spiritual spouses are mandated from Satan to bring havoc into people's lives. They're they destroy marriages, families, destinies, 
They bring about sickness and emotional unbalance. You know, from the beginning of ancient times, the belief that, like in the times of Noah, women would be impregnated and that their offspring would be one of pure evil and contempt for all things of God. The theologian um, St. Augustine, Augustine and the Catholic priest St. Thomas Aquinas and actually King James all published their theories debating, uh, debating these demonic activities, but they all came to one certain thought. They were not from God. In John 10, it says, A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. This is the enemy's unrelenting determination. He wants to slaughter us. He wants to destroy our destinies. He wants to steal from them. He wants to take away everything that God had planned. And you know, through their demonic perversion, their objection is to defile one's soul and spirit, causing one to have feeling of shame and guilt. And you know, these demonic entities can inject within one's dreams dream process, the same physical sensation of sexual intercourse, and also perform sexual acts upon and within the person's physical body. One can have an orgasm while they are asleep, awake, and awake in the morning, not remembering the dream nor the event, but have feelings that they were violated. Some people have have had these types of demonic entities passed down through generational curses and have experienced these sensations and physical acts since puberty. And so they've been accustomed to these visitations and they might even be deceived that to think that this is actually normal. It's not what God had planned at all. You see, after the continual dream state or physical visitations, one may find at any time, day or night, no matter where they are, and know for apparent reason, overwhelming sexual urges come, and they're caused by no reasons at all. And the, so the thought of sex and, and the desire to release that tension permeates one mind and the sensation and the need to be satisfied overrules one's moral compass. So the feelings of guilt and shame and rejection can set in, and that's right where the demons want one to be making it, wants one to be, making it difficult for one to run to God and to, or to seek out ministry because they're feeling of shame and guilt. And people won't understand. So these demonic invaders are also agents of night terrors, terrifying, you know, the terrifying heart-pounding nightmares that can jolt one awake. And their purpose is one of control, you see, because they want to give you unrest, keeping you up at night in fear instead of receiving the peaceful night that God had planned for you. When we look at um, Webster's dictionary definition of incubus, it says, this is for incubus, an evil spirit that lies on a person in their sleep, especially one that has sexual intercourse with women while they were sleeping. The definition of succubus, a demon assuming female form to have sexual intercourse with men in their sleep. And the second definition is their other activity, something such as an experience, situation, or object having the monstrous character, character of a nightmare or producing feelings of anxiety or terror. 
through sexual acts, be it through the unconscious state, dreams, or actual physical state, incubus and succubus try to establish a covenant within the person through the spiritual principles of becoming one flesh. We talked a lot about that in sessions one and two. Uh, yes, yeah, sessions one to three. It is a, a covenant, actually, it is a counterfeit of the covenant to the God-ordained one flesh marriage covenant between a male and a female. When one has a dream of having sexual intercourse, even if it's with the, per the person in your dream is like your spouse, it can be an indication of a visitation from a demon. Because remember I told you that they can take on the form of someone that you know. Sexual intercourse is meant to be a deliberate act. A person is awake and aware of their involvement. It was never meant to be through a dream. Let's take a look again at our focus scripture verse throughout this series. One flesh, marriage covenant. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they sh shall be one flesh. This is God's covenant in marriage. You see, once these de demons are not prevented from their actions, the demons begin to manifest a possessive behavior uh, towards their human partner, and they're very jealous of anyone getting in between their spiritual relationship, even if the person is the marriage partner, and even potential married partner. So this possessiveness can cause hardships within a marriage and can cause obstacles from one having a potential husband or wife. So remember, these demons hate God's establishment of marriage, and they will do anything to destroy it. You know, God gave people of Noah's time 120 years to take dominion over these demonic forces, but they didn't. You know, perhaps they were scared of them. Perhaps they were really ignorant of who they truly were. Perhaps they were deceived by this seductive lure. Whatever it was, these demons still continue to torment, abuse, and manipulate people. And even Christians are being deceived. The Apostle Paul warned us of deception. He said, Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. That's from 2 Corinthians. Cindy Jacobs is the president and co-founder of the organization called uh, General's Intercession International. She warns of the deception that intercessors can face with the demonic. She writes in her manual uh, for militant intercession, it's called Possessing the Gates of the Enemy, that intercessors can be deceived with the illusion of sexual intimacy in the bridal chamber of Christ. Cindy Jacobs warns of how a woman thought that she was being blessed with special intimacy with Jesus because she was a mature intercessor. This woman recounts that during the night, whom she thought was Jesus, would come to her and bring her into his chamber. She believed it was Jesus because the voice was so beautiful and said it was he. She would become aroused sexually and felt that she must be having some unique experience in which the Lord was loving her in a special way. And that can be found in the book on chapters 10, pages 141. 
We all need to be vigilant of how the enemy of our soul uses tactics, which are often misleading, cunning in nature. They can be lure of sin and of unforgiveness in order to generate points of entry to destroy our lives, our health, and the destiny God has for us. We are called. We need to be vigilant of the evil's, evil's strategies. We are called to be well-balanced, always alert, because your enemy, the den devil, roams around incessantly, roaring like a lion, looking for its prey to devour. He's hungry for Christians. He's so hungry for us that he wants to eat us up. He wants to kill us so that we are not the lights in the world that God has called us to be. So what we need to understand as Christians is the devil cannot devour us or control us unless we, 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 we allow our authority to be given over to him, to his schemes, and to keep the points of entry open. You know, I, I cannot stress enough how important it is to appropriate, that means to take hold of, within our spirit, within our being, our spiritual rights as a child of God. And not just to do that, but to assert them in spiritual warfare and stand our ground. You know, just being knowledgeable of the title of a child of God does very little if one does not implement the blessings that we've been given. And you know, and one of the numerous blessings uh, for his image bearers is delegated authority in Jesus' name to cast out demons and to release, to be released from them. So we're, we're going to continue with a prayer in a minute, but I have a warning. If you do not have the Holy Spirit living in you, please do not continue with the following prayer. You know, there are numerous times with, within the Bible, within the scriptures, where people who were not yet Christians tried to cast out demons and ended up worse. So if you're interested, take a look at Acts 19, verses 11 through 16. So please heed my warning and contact a spirit-filled Christian or a local Bible-believing church and allow them to lead you in prayer to become a child of God, a follower of Jesus. Then, as a child of God, you will be blessed with the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And also, if you have not watched the previous series and repeated those prayers, please do so prior to following these ones so that other points of entry will be closed and the demonic will no longer have any legal access. During the following prayer, there will be a time to insert the type of open doors you believe had contributed to the incubus and succubus demons having legal right in your life. Remember, if one is a Christian, God has given you the authority to sever the spiritual ties and to take your authority over any oppression from the demonic influence. So again, I want you to be determined to be confident in the work of the cross and take your God-given authority as you repeat the following prayer after me. And just like before, uh, when this video session is over, you can come back to the segment and repeat the prayer for any other ways God has shown you points of entry. So we're going to begin. Repeat the prayer after me. Oh. 
Thank you, Father, that you have given your children the power to exercise authority over demonic oppression. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every demon until it is time to be casted out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent on behalf of myself and those in my family line who have had sexual relationships with evil spirits, familiar spirits, with incubus, succubus spirits, and the demon mare. Lord, I repent of every contact, personal and generational, with all spirit husbands, spirit wives, and I renounce all spirit spouses which have been assigned to function specifically within my family. I repent of any blood or sexual covenants that have been made through my generational line which open doors to this family of spirit spouses. I cut every soul tie with this family spirit. I renounce and break any covenants or dedications that might have been made to the Nephilim, Bala, or Bila. I repent of my own sins and actions of, and this is where you would insert, that open the door for these evil spirits to gain legal right of entry. I repent for allowing these evil spirits to reduce and control my will. I now renounce and break all agreements with these demonic entities. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness, and I ask you to close all ungodly pathways, doors, and ties into ungodly realms. I remove all defilement and tainting. Lord, I ask you to restore, restore my godly dreams from heavenly places. I now choose to put my spirit, will, emotions, mind, and body under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce and demand that all evil represented by incubus, succubus, and the demon mare, and all evil connected to ungodly sexual behavior to come out of my body and my physical and my spiritual conscience, subconscious and unconscious mind. 
I break off these spirits from my tongue, hands, fingers, breast, sexual organs, or any part of my body. I will no longer serve these demon spirits. I renounce Satan and all his works. I stand in the authority that I have as a believer. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who walked in the flesh, I cast these spirits out and command them to leave me now and go where Jesus would send you. I command all confusion to leave and I call back all godly parts that have been scattered or fragmented. Father, I ask you to forgive me, wash me, cleanse me, and I ask you to restore my innocence, increase my love for you, and help me to be a faithful lover of you. Amen. This is my prayer for you. I ask, Lord, for a fresh infilling of your Holy Spirit into all the newly cleared out areas of everyone's life who have just said that prayer. For healing in each person's body, soul, and spirit of any damage that was done by the presence of evils. For each person to be sensitive to not to reopen any doors. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you that you have forgiven us. We thank you that you give us the power to walk in your ways and in newness of life. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that when you look at us, when we accept that, when we accept him as your Lord and Savior, as our Lord and Savior, he paid the price. When we accept that, Father, because of Jesus' blood that was shed, that paid the price, you look at us through his blood and you see us as righteous in you. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for your righteousness, that we can walk righteousness. We can walk in acceptance. We can walk worthy in you. We can walk in your freedom, living life the way that you had destined us to live, with no obstacles, no hindrances. And Father, I ask that you bless each and every one and that they would be filled, overflowing with your Holy Spirit, and they will worship you and give you all the honor and glory, and that their dreams shall be sweet dreams, that be your dreams, Father, of how you have planned their destiny. Bless them, Father. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>